welcome today to Jody D. Uh, no, Jody A. Dashor. I got your name wrong when I wrote to you. Uh, sorry about that. And I'm very delighted and honored to have you on board today. You are an amazing explorer, um, experiential practitioner of plant based medicinal approach to biotoxins. You, you have many specialities because I, I understand you approach autism, Lyme's disease, biotoxin illness, chronic inflammatory response uh, syndrome, the SIRS, which we're going to refer to later. And you have more than 20 years of experience also in being a board certified integrative uh, pediatrician um, with clinical experience, that is. And uh, you're also board certified as a holistic health practitioner, which is amazing. I didn't know that even existed. Uh, being here in the UK, we're broadcasting from the UK as the Healing Matrix Online. And uh, it's remarkable to see your whole exploration and studies and your degrees and all that and your your certification is just mind-boggling i really want to go into it because it's important for the listeners to realize that not only doctors who study eight years or more as specialists uh, have a great trajectory of being very scientific and very well studied in their programs and of course with the practical experience behind you so it's interesting to see that you also work with specialities like the International Lyme Associated Diseases mm -hmm. Society since 2011, so that's more than eight years now. And uh, you also are on the scientific advisory board of the Bioregulatory Medicine Institute, Global Lyme's Diagnostics Lab, and the International Forum of what is extraordinary because when I heard first, I was very surprised to hear about it, but now it makes total sense. The camel advocacy and medicine. Now, I'd love to hear towards the end, maybe when we're looking at uh, treatment ways, at this wonderful way of helping people to get their gut biome back into uh, the best balance. Yeah. And you have had eight years of intensive, her intensive herbal studies under the guidance of renowned master herbalists and as a clinical herbalist. And you might want to say maybe uh, in the beginning a bit about that. Uh, very curious what that involved. And I'm sure the listeners are very curious. And you created your own herbal medicinal formulas using exclusively on your patients right now. But I hope we're going to see that also on the market so we can um, try it out. Even if we're not just under your guidance, but uh, pro probably those people who are really on the call today who want to be proactive about their health care. And also you trained in the past allopathically. Love to hear more about that because we got questions about how to integrate the two. Uh, that was offshore, meaning uh, you were in India and the UK, I understand, and you specialized in neurology, which is yes. another phenomenal, I mean, bottomless pit exploration of how we really function, isn't it? So uh, you also, uh, engaged in naturopathic disciplines like Ayurvedic medicine, homeopathy, and yoga. And then beyond that, uh, probably more recently, you, um, uh, I, I will be curious to hear how many years you're working with this, but you're the founder and director of BioNexus Health Clinic, and that is in Marlboro, New Jersey, USA. And you're working with over 50 different countries and the patients coming from all those different countries. I hope they all talk English. <laughs> no. Let's hear about the languages uh, that you are mastering also. Well, we have, uh, I personally speak seven, but uh, we, thank you. But we, we do a lot of virtual work with patients and they often have, you know, a family member as, as a uh, translator. So yes, 52 oh, countries. Yes. Yeah. The latest recently was somebody from uh, Togo in Africa. And honestly, I hadn't even heard about the country before, but apparently they heard about me. Yeah. So that was fascinating. That's wonderful to hear that you, you have all those followers from all around the globe and making your knowledge uh, accessible. I mean, that's so important because we need these alternatives and the complementary side of working with health. And last but not least, as we mentioned earlier, you're working also with scientifically formulated all natural based treatment options for patients of all ages and with a clinically guided chamomile 
therapeutic protocol. I mean, that's a handful. How do you juggle all this? And how did you get in the first place to all this? Welcome again. Uh, really uh, want to give you a very warm welcome to our crowd out there. And uh, if you would like to add anything to this, I don't know if I omitted something which was essential for your journey. And if not, if you would just tell us, how did you reach this amazing uh, profoundness? I mean, it's, it's to me, it's mind boggling how many subjects you touch brought together in a holistic approach and working with nature in such a knowledgeable way. How did you arrive there? What inspired you? Well, Hans, uh, first of all, it's wonderful to be here with you on the show. So thank you for inviting me. Um, You're welcome. You know, as they say, nothing truly hits home until it hits your home. Uh, my son, my only child, has been my inspiration. And it's been kind of a, a joint journey for both of us. When he was about seven years old, uh, he was at baseball practice when suddenly his left leg gave out and he was unable to use it. The next day, he was in excruciating pain, unable to walk, and needed a wheelchair. Painkillers barely took the edge off at this point of a deep, throbbing pelvic pain, which made him unable to use his legs, which had also become weak. Just was just, just you know, all of a sudden. Now, 19 specialists, from neurologists to oncologists, because, you know, when they can't find answers, they say, you know what, it's, it's now, it's a... Uh, time to perhaps visit a cancer specialist, um, along with every toxic scan under the sun. 40 to 50 tubes of blood for blood tests. Here's the, here's the important part. 10 false negative tests for Lyme disease. We ended up with a near-death situation with brain inflammation, anxiety, panic, paranoia, and he was still in pain in a wheelchair, this little guy. We finally found a pediatric Lyme specialist, uh, you know, in, in where else, uh, in Connecticut, who treated him aggressively for about a year, saved his life pretty much. We found 11 infections, multiple bodily systems were affected. So all in all, the conventional treatment, even with proper precautions, such as, you know, spacing the meds out and probiotics, special diets, but it does take an enormous toll on the gut. We saved his right. life, right. but now he had lost a lot of weight, had stopped growing, was diagnosed as failure to thrive. Mm. At this point, we switched to natural approaches, yeah. but the number one holistic physician in the world, no names, gave up on my son when he was eight years old. How long ago are we talking about with this now? Uh, my son is now 18, and he just... Mm. Uh, got into, uh, he was just admitted into a, uh, a BSMD program here in the U.S. Wow, so all fit and jerpy, as we say here in England. That's really amazing. Would you say from your experience now that the Lyme's disease was like a precursor to all the other infections that happened subsequently, or was it something that he just carried within him and many people might have to similar situations? That is that is a, a good question. I I. If it is okay to finish, yeah, uh, we'll come back to about that. Yeah. How, how I got, and that, that, that definitely, be, yeah, really good question. Okay. Yeah. So that you know, at that point, when uh, this practitioner gave up on on an eight year old, that was my turning point. So I decided, in order to accurately unravel this puzzle, and this is going to be important for you know for your uh, uh, viewers as well. Um, I decided that unfortunately I had to become a master of many specialties myself. So, you know, because tick-borne disease is a quagmire of slowly, insidiously acquired multi-organ pathology. Now you combine that with exposure to mold, and that's when it becomes the fight for your life. So mm -hmm. in order to fully get better, and you've been exposed to mold yourself, so I'm, I'm sure you, you can appreciate the the gravity of the situation that in order to fully get better, one has to address not only the tick-borne infections, then there's the mold, there's methylation issues, detoxification, mm -hmm. um, other biological toxins, heavy metals, yep. leaky gut, candida, yep. Yep. autoimmune, PAMs, parasites, cognitive issues, my goodness, the, the list goes on. Yep. Um, so natural plant-based approaches are far gentler on the body. You know, when the body is suffering with all of these, 
Uh, and this approach is also help with adequate repair of the systems damage. And they are easier to, you know, kind of slowly build up for the more sensitive patients. So it is actually rare to find a practitioner who understands the, the full 360, and I decided to become one. So, you know, holistic practitioner, clinical herbalist, everything that you yeah. uh, described prior. Fantastic. Now, thank you. Now, to answer the question that you asked me okay. after, as I was speaking, was, yes, when you are dealing with Lyme disease, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, no, not at all. Okay. Carry on. Okay. Uh, you asked, you know, what is it important to look at the the full 360 when you are dealing with Lyme and co-infections? And my answer would be yes, yeah. because when there is infection and inflammation, the infections don't really go anywhere because infections like the host to be compromised and inflammation compromises the host it compromises the immune system and uh, a smart bacteria like the Lyme spirochete is able to compromise the immune system as well so you have your uh, adaptive or acquired immune system that is being um, you know manipulated and suppressed yeah. by uh, the, the Lyme bacterium and then you have your innate immune system, the other half of your immune system, that is being upregulated and dysregulated by mold and biotoxin exposure. Right. So it, you know, both of these pathological processes kind of feed off each other. So uh, what I see in my practice are, are unfortunately patients who are not responding to any kind of line treatment. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah, it just so you you have to look deeper as to what's going on. And so for someone, for example, of my age, I had Lyme's disease when I lived in Connecticut, funnily enough. Um, it disappeared miraculously, all the symptoms after three months, never appeared again. 40 years later, I'm now having to deal with mold and other toxins, by, uh, that's petrochemical toxins. Would you say someone who has lived through his life and then being affected later by mold might be also affected still by the Lyme being there dormant in the body? Absolutely, mm. yes. Uh, Lyme disease is, you know, there's no cure for Lyme. So it, it is possible to put Lyme into remission. Yeah. Many people don't experience long-term illness with Lyme disease. Yeah. However... The reactivation of Lyme happens when there is any kind of trauma. It could be emotional trauma, okay. major trauma, emotional yep. trauma, or it could be physical and physiological trauma. So when you are exposed to mold, that can count, you know, it is a multi-system illness, mold illness. So that counts as physiological trauma, and that can certainly reactivate your um, dormant Lyme disease at that point. Yes. It's interesting you mention also emotional trauma because as I had a breakdown with it a year ago, I went out also back to emotional traumas that were the similar symptoms caused by the whole breakdown that was, you know, triggered by mold, but maybe subliminally there also with Lyme and uh, death experiences, you know, suffocating experiences, drowning experiences. Very interesting to see how that actually is there it's always there like you said with the limes and if they all come together it's a very toxic environment it seems yes. and yes, i'm impressed you're saying and particularly as you had to deal with your son that you realized you wanted to look at a gentler approach to actually dealing with all this because uh, i've always opted for the natural approach and had only once in my life antibiotic treatment but for many people they're treated with antibiotics all their lives and their whole system is breaking down, their whole bi the gut biome, etc. So would you say, in your experience, you had somewhat of a conventional experience also with your son, which was a harsh approach to getting the handle on the case. Would you say there is a case for working with conventional medicine and pharmaceuticals and antibiotics, etc., plus the complementary approach? 
Or what's your take on this? What would you suggest to people to look for? The conventional approach definitely has its place in acute care and emergency medicine. Yeah. Along, you know, uh, along with focus, uh, along with, of course, the surgical interventions that are used for chronic illness. However, the allopathic approach is mostly immune suppression, uh, palliative symptom relief, or masking the symptoms, steroids, biologicals, chemotherapy, mm. harsh medications, and such. Yeah. So more and more people are finding a much enhanced quality of life, I feel, um, with natural options. In the, in the hands of a skilled practitioner, that's the key. Um, so, you know, with, with my practice, because of my conventional background, um, I, I do understand how to interpret labs, you know, uh, the, the uh, pharmacology of allopathic uh, medication, pediatrics, autism. So these are all things that I've, I've had a lot of past experience with. Okay. Currently, my practice is completely plant-based. Um, I help patients transition from conventional to natural. And I'm, I'm usually easily able to collaborate with their uh, primary care physicians. Ultimately, what I see is plant-based plan medicine becomes becomes the, the primary, and pharmaceuticals are used as complementary if okay. needed. Yeah, if needed, you know, under certain circumstances. Like for example, if if I have a patient who comes back as very high numbers for mycoplasma pneumonia. Or, you know, I'm, I'm doing a swab and uh, strep is very high. Then, then you know, we run some labs um, and strep numbers are even higher, especially yeah. if this is a child that is at a risk for developing pans pandas. So at that point, if there is no autism involved, we try uh, to go for, you know, a short course of antibiotics along with the herbal and biomedical treatment. I see. So this, yeah, so th this kind of helps to bring the toxicity from the bacteria under control a little bit faster for this person. It's a great relief to hear you turning the whole playing board around 180 degrees and call now conventional medicine the complementary medicine. And as you said, it's so amazing that they're so capable with acute cases. And I suppose with life-threatening cases, it's important to maybe fall back on it. But long term, you're saying the, the plant-based, nature-based approach, the gentler approach, the more holistic approach, which um, I'm curious also if you were including uh, nutritional advice there, is a much more safer long-term healing for the patient than going the other way. Yes, absolutely. Uh, nutrition is number one. Okay. Food as medicine. Yeah. Yeah. That that is extremely important. I think that is something um, you know right along your lines as well, isn't it? Yes, that's what what my main line of work is in consulting and teaching biodynamic farming and gardening for food security and highest quality food. And um, I must say though, there's also the whole question: how do we prepare the food? How we create the environment right. to eat it? Um, when we eat, how often we eat, and so on. I've had to learn a lot in my own health journey and life journey that just the good quality food is not enough anymore. We need to know really the whole complex array and and the unison of how it all works together. So you coming in as food, as medicine, I'm sure you're diving much deeper than what I was able to glean from just growing food and providing it to people and then leaving them at their own devi uh, dev uh, devices. Yeah? Yes, absolutely. I, I agree with everything you said. Yes. Um, you know, it, it goes not only creating a, a, a spiritual environment yeah. for a, at home, you know, a clean environment. You, not everybody is, is spiritual, but, you know, it's certainly helpful. And, and obviously, uh, you know, most people understand that spiritual has got nothing to do with, with religion. That's not what we are speaking about here. It's just having a, um, you know, being present when you're eating, yeah. not completely giving in to taste. Listen to clues that your body is giving you. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, it is better to eat multiple small meals that are well-rounded versus three big meals sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, certain scientifically 
uh, derived approaches like intermittent fasting are extremely beneficial for the immune system, for immune activation, for, you know, um, improved detoxification in the body, decreasing the body's toxin load. So yes, we, we could we could have uh, an entire session on yeah. on this, along with the Ayurvedic constitutional approaches to diet. So there are there are so many things, you know, and then like I said, the environment to create at home, when you cook, how you cook, if you have a backyard garden, how you harvest the, the vegetables, the, the effects of the, the full moon and the new moon cycles. So there is there is so much awesomeness yeah. you know, yeah. in all of this that, that we could have a whole other show. <laughs> plenty to learn and, and plenty to explore together. I'm sure I'd be loving to hear more about this from your point of view as a practitioner because I know it from the growing side, but also from the harvesting side, we consider that in biodynamic farming. Uh, not just in terms of the moon cycle, in terms of the waning and waxing, but also in which constellation it finds itself. Because yes. you're well aware with your Ayurvedic approach of the, the different uh, temperaments, possibly, and how uh, we can actually benefit from that also. Harvesting plants at the best time when they're actually influenced by the best uh, elemental forces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I hear you saying about food being a very important part of this, your environment, the mindfulness when we eat, what environment we're in. Uh, what would you, what kind of importance would you give water? Because that's something that most people ignore. Uh, I trust the guest here. <clears throat> she drank the tap water. Uh, in certain areas in England, we have fluoridated water. Uh, I had found E. coli in water here because I'm dealing with water systems also, that fil- filtration systems, and um, all the other things that we might find in water that might contribute in some way to this chronic disease syndrome that we're talking about here, is it? Yeah, uh, the four most important things that people can do to prevent chronic illness, you know, would be clean air clean diet, clean water, and clean environment. So you're speaking about water. So yes, absolutely. Uh, You know, it's not just bottled water. It needs to be filtered, clean water. The uh, plastic bottles are not necessarily always the answer. Um, It needs to be structured water. Many patients uh, end up using reverse osmosis, so you know, and many other filters. Yeah. They pull everything out, including the beneficial elements. So yeah. everybody says, "Oh, I, I need to drink water. The body is seventy percent water." Sure, it is, but is your water structured or is your water yeah. hollow and empty? So having trace minerals, essential minerals, having electrolytes. These are important in your water. So one of one of the uh, foundational approaches in my in in my approach, or or you know uh, as I call it the bioexcess approach, is along with good food, you need structured water. So trace minerals, mm-hmm. electrolytes. Even if you're adding in um, you know, half a teaspoon of uh, sea salt or a pink Himalayan salt with a squirt of lemon juice, it gives adequate structure to the water before you drink it. Have you heard of the vortex water? Yes, I have. And also the whole aspect that they studied that you can actually meditate and give thought and thoughtfulness and, and feeling and love oh, to the water with Emoto and all the studies. You know, you... Masaru Emoto, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yes. I mean, you know, uh, mindfulness, gratitude. Yeah. If, you know, um, what's, what's, what's the thing that I, that I keep reading? If your attitude is that of gratitude, <laughs> that's the way to be or something to that it's... effect. And yeah, absolutely, yeah. you know, um, uh, science has shown that the the feeling of gratitude, or if you are uh, expressing gratitude, feeling gratitude, that can change neurons. It can, you know, bring about calmness and satisfaction and happiness. It's it's pretty amazing. 
in your own experience, as we're touching on that subject right now with the water and, and the different attitudes that we can have, would you say there is a certain cascade of importance of healing that uh, is present for people that where the more invisible parts of us that we some people call spiritual, but call it the thought life, the feeling life, um, does that play a big role in the healing that you're encouraging with people to also do with that additional support from plants, water, and food? Absolutely. Emotional and spiritual areas need to be addressed. Yeah. For you know, you you have you have people that are that have survived Lyme disease and more, and then you have people you know, uh, and if I, I, I'm, I'm happy to say I think you yourself included and myself and, and uh, my son yeah. who are not only survivors we yeah. have thrived yeah. in fact all of the changes you know it's it's actually been a gift of illness yeah. meaning you know, the, 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 the extreme lifestyle changes that, that have just become routine now those would not have been achieved had it not been for the gift of illness, you know. So the universe always achieves the balance. You, you you cannot truly enjoy happiness unless you've also uh, been through, you know, sorrow. I so, I love you saying this. I feel so deeply touched by this. You mentioning this element that uh, blessed be illness, because uh, I feel blessed having had breakdowns all my life since childhood, being so sensitive and you know. Uh, hard out of shell and you know might appear all managing and everything but inside very soft and very affected and sensitive and I really want to you know shout out to the listeners really listen to what's going on within you because when I was young in my teens I always felt I was different from others and I wished I was like as hardened and as unaffected as all my friends and yet I feel blessed that I had that sensitivity. I had the warning signs. I had even the breakdown. So I could actually heal and go through these stages. Like you say, you then become another person in a way with new lifestyle, with a new healing whole system in place until the next level hits you, <laughs> which you didn't realize and didn't see coming. You thought we were all good. And then you have this amazing awakening happening. And I'm so happy to hear you talk about this. Because I think that's one of the biggest blessings of illness that we can uh, imagine. Also for people with uh, compromised cell issues, which I rather use that term than cancer. Um, there's so many blessings by lifestyle changes, uh, relationship changes. So really pleased you address that uh, issue, that those are really opportunities. Do you like to add a bit more to that subject yourself from your experience of dealing with so many clients from different cultures? and yet? you must say a com see a commonality in the healing process. Yes. Culturally speaking, you, you mentioned different cultures and so many things come to my head that yeah. I'm like, okay, what do I say first? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you also mentioned awakening and that, that is opening Pandora's box right there. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, going through the ascension process yeah. is, is very interesting. Kundalini, once once that is once that is triggered, it's it's a uh, completely from 3D to 5D experience. It's okay. mind blowing, but it brings everything to the surface. You know how how we and and, and I, I'm going to address the cultural, but uh, what what I have to say about cultural is spirituality is present in all cultures. Yeah. Peace, mindfulness. Mm. Um, Having a clean, clear, minimalistic, you know, a clutter-free lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And when I say clutter-free, I also mean mind clutter. Getting rid of toxic people in your life. Learning to say no to others so you can say yes to your own self. Mm -hmm. um, unconditional love for your own self first. I mean, if you don't understand love, for your own self, you, you're not capable of giving love to somebody else, at least not true love. So 
all of these things are multicultural. You know, they, they are global. They, they transcend all barriers. And many people, uh, all people are able to connect with the mind-body-spirit connection. That is, in fact, they are able to connect with that right away. You know, it's it's just so fascinating. And uh, that is a huge part, you know, of non-supportive family members, uh, processes that are not serving you, uh, self-sabotaging beliefs, uh, you know, uh, trying to be a martyr. The, these things are, are, are all self-sabotaging, and little by little, it's important to get to know yourself. And uh, few of us who've had the opportunity and the, the sheer blessing of being able to help other people and experiencing ascension and awakening of, um, of our own inner being and inner selves, it, it is... It is uh, a community that is growing larger and larger, I find, yeah. don't you? Uh, I'm, I'm totally with you there. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, Björn Lundberg from Sweden, and he's a, a body mastery practitioner, and he was talking about the, the fifth dimension and the paradigm shift, and you know, how his whole journey was also marked with these challenges. And beautiful to see him coming from the body mastery side, integrating all these different concepts here touching on coming from your side of uh, work, which is the, the natural um, approach with plants and so on. So it's really nice to see that there's this unison of awakening, as you call it, and the ascension, really. I mean, we we talked about 11.11. Uh, for those who haven't been around in 1987, we had a great celebration, and you could see the, the crop circles appear in the environment. You could see all these amazing, wonderful expressions, also in the change of plant growth, and if you look around now, since 2012, it's another huge ascension happening, uh, uh, not just ascension, but uh, acceleration of change. And of course, that brings with it also the change in terms of health and ill health that balances and the homeostasis, how we respond to the environment in and outer and to other people seem to be more affected, more rapidly changing. And illness is almost manifesting to a greater degree more extreme for people to then wake up. It's really all that is about awakening. And I was wondering, I mean, you touched on it already a little bit, but maybe you want to elaborate. What are these symptoms that maybe individuals can look out for in themselves that will help them to actually catch that journey into ill health early enough not to have to go down into these breakdowns that, you know, I had sometimes suffered because I was ignorant. I was so involved in the outer work and consulting and helping people to create farms. And I forgot my own inner self. And you mentioned also, just to add that, this wonderful <clears throat> consciousness that you, you seem to carry about women that are there to serve and they're always giving of themselves. They never put the boundary. So what are on a physiological, emotional mindfulness level, spiritual level, symptoms maybe that people can look out for to catch themselves early and start looking for practitioners like you, start being, becoming more proactive? On a mindfulness and spiritual level, that becomes at a completely different level altogether. You know, and not everybody is, is really aware. What comes first is more on a physiological and physical level. Mm -hmm. So mindfulness level, it would be, um, I think you're, you're mentioning from, um, from my lecture that you attended. Yes, that is something that makes me deeply sad is how women, mothers, wives don't take care of themselves and they give so much of themselves. Um, and it's, it's, you know, just, it's, it's a societal program that is inbuilt. And again, it transcends all cultures. So uh, a feeling of, um, you know, that, that you are giving too much, a, a feeling of kind of a nervous breakdown, like you mentioned, um, breakdown with respect to psychological stability that is a huge warning sign okay so we're talking about depression particularly anxiety 
uh, chronic anxiety and all those sort of issues. Yes. Yeah. Uh, often loss of um, personality and individuality. Right. right. That is, that is, you know, uh, but the, the simple symptoms to look for, which could be something going on underneath that should not be swept under the rug yeah. that oh you know it's stress oh it's the kids it's yeah. my work i i work no mm. simple things like um red eyes blurred vision night sweats mood swings headaches you know things which are constant yeah it's not like once a month you you had a headache and it never came back but things like like what I just mentioned, and yeah. along with you know other things like when your eyes uh, eyes are excessively tearing, uh -huh. you have some sort of a, a metallic taste in your mouth. Yeah. You're constantly feeling malaise. Mm. There is vague abdominal discomfort. Mm. You know there are appetite swings. You have difficulty relaxing and regulating your body. Um, also, regulation of your body temperature. Mm -hmm. You you find that you are going to the bathroom too much. You know, frequency of urination. Um, going up the stairs is becoming uh, increased shortness of breath. Just going up the stairs. Then you also notice things like uh, you know you're, you're feeling weak. There's increased fatigue. Mm -hmm. There is a slight amount of memory impairment, right. light sensitivity. Yeah. Um, not able to remember, you know, even even if you're just reading um, a novel, which is enjoyable, but you you can't remember what happened a, a few pages ago, and you have to go back and refer. Mm -hmm. Difficulty concentrating, mm -hmm. you know, vague aches and pains, confusion. Yep. Yep. What else? Cough, excessive thirst. These are all signs that that you need to be looking into. You know, slow down, be kinder to yourself. And just run a few simple blood tests to see what's going on. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah. You know, because many people are left brain and, and they like to see what's going on in their body. Yeah. Another way is it could be a wake up call. So you need to know in my world, Hans, I, I always look for you know any kind of a uh, neuropsychiatric issue, I say, you know what, low look for infections. Okay. And this is is this partly related also to what one hears a lot now, uh, the whole gut health that's been compromised and that there's a leaky gut, as you mentioned earlier, and that the balance of the gut bacteria because of the lack of the balanced food, that we're not having enough fiber, not enough health-giving food, um, maybe conventionally grown and um, loaded with chemicals, would that contribute also to that? mind fog and other conditions that might then, well, the person might be more susceptible to also be exposed to uh, the more biotoxin side of um, exposure. Exactly. You know, uh, biological toxins or being exposed to water damaged building, that is not in your control. Yeah. You know, it happens to people, but yeah. what is in your control mm -hmm. is your body, your immune system, like you mentioned, the kind of food you're eating, yes. how you're eating it, mm -hmm. how is the food cooked? Yeah. Uh, it's not just temperature, right? It's it's also the pots and pans. It's the utensils right. that are used. I mean, what kind of a toxic mm. body burden yeah. do you carry for your immune system to be healthy or not mm -hmm. healthy? Mm -hmm. We have to have so, a whole education program because as you start talking, I remembering Romanians working with me in Germany say, you have to cook on the fire, it's the best taste. And then you hear, well, that's the only way to have the best nutritional value. And then you see people having processed food, putting it in the microwave. Yes. Now, what a contrast. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Or, or pressure cooking or eating yeah. on the run. I mean, life has become yeah. so fast-paced yeah. yeah. and money-oriented. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's not just performance-oriented. I, yeah. I, you know, uh, I understand you wanting to be productive, you wanting to gain satisfaction from what you do every day, you know, that that's important to have validation, to have satisfaction. But it is this is just constantly running after the mighty dollar. Yeah. You know, you just keep going and, and, and you, you grab fast food without without 
without any conscious awareness of what's going on. It's just, I don't know, it's eating junk, thinking junk, being exposed to junk of various kinds. It's it's very sad. I mean, I, I think there is a huge transformation coming yeah. as awareness increases. And, and I'm so, you know, I, I never thought I would be here with you one day, you know, speaking to your audience about yeah. gold and lime and, yeah. and the environment yeah. and ascension. It's it's fabulous. <laughs> well, I love it. Uh, it's it's all so connected, and of course, the other um, area that's so connected, which most people don't have direct access, and where they might need your expertise, is the whole question of how do we work with the constitution of a person, and uh, that could be both heretic, uh, uh, hereditary, but constitutional, what we bring into this life, both as gifts, or as we call it, also the talents, but also the the setup for maybe certain illnesses. I mean, in the conference, it was mentioned that 25% of the population would have now a gene that would not necessarily auto-clean and, and um, upcycle all the toxins, but they would actually get stuck on that process. Uh, you have that amazing capacity with your insight in homeopathy and in the Ayurvedic background and also your herbal medicine. And uh, I would love for you to say uh, a few things about that and how you're working with patients with that, what your priority again is there, and how you integrate that into, or how people are taught to integrate that into their lifestyle. Okay. I love that question. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to mold exposure, exposure to water damaged buildings, biotoxin illness, which develops, or SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, like we mentioned earlier. Now, what happens is, uh, genetically, approximately 24 to 27% of the general population are unable to naturally detoxify themselves of these toxins. The body is unable to recognize the, these biotoxins as invaders. So what happens is the toxins will sit and wait for a trigger. And once a trigger is introduced, the result can be a variety of illnesses and potentially chronic issues that can mimic other diseases. So, you know, if it is a triggered genetic response in these susceptible people, then more often than not, it develops into chronic inflammation. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, when we run labs, when we look at these genetic patterns, there are several different kinds. There, you know, uh, most people are a combination of sorts. Yeah. So uh, you could be susceptible to chronic Lyme disease as well as a mold. You could have the dreaded uh, genetic buildup with a uh, makeup, which means that you are susceptible. Um, to all different kinds of biological toxins and have another gene for not being able to clear mold. So these are the kind of patients that I see in my practice that, that you know, they get sicker and sicker. Now, uh, what was the other part of your question? Well, basically, how, how do you um, identify these people, I mean, and work with the constitutions then? Because uh, yes. that's a very important one, I suppose. Yes. And also, how do you help people to integrate then the natural healing process with your natural uh, plant-based remedies into their lifestyle? Yes. Um, so what happens is, yeah, I, I recall now, you, you mentioned homeopathy. Now, homeopathy, yeah. I found, you know, no offense to anyone, but uh, scientifically speaking, I found homeopathy to be... Uh, of limited use when there are so many things going on. You know, right. you have one part of the immune system is up and dysregulated. The other part is suppressed. You have inflammation. You have infections. Um, you you are dealing with different kinds of toxins. You know, you have heavy metals. You have environmental toxins. The water is not clear. You're eating junk food. You you have you know un unhealthy lifestyle choices. So when all of this happens, I have found uh, limited success with classical homeopathy. I mean, of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are genius practitioners um, that can achieve a change. But all in all, you know, from what, what I've seen in that practice, now what is very helpful is homotoxicology, uh -huh. which is complex homeopathy, you know, mm -hmm. simply stated. 
So homotoxicology, along with, you know, Reykjavik's uh, six stages, etc., that that's great. But what homotoxicology brings to homeopathy is that there are combination remedies. You know, it's complex homeopathy. So there are multiple remedies that are uh, targeting the same toxin or the same infection. That seems to be able to kind of evade the host defense suppression mechanisms okay. that microbes use. Interesting. You know, and these are very smart microbes. I mean, you know, we are looking at multiple microbial uh, infections, multiple microbial concerns yeah. once your immune system is down. It's not just bacteria. I see people, you know, loaded with uh, viruses. Um, and uh, now, you know, uh, people are speaking more about retroviruses. Yeah. There is a bacteria, there is uh, candida, there is mycotoxins, there is parasites. So there is a, a, a lot of stress on the inherent mm -hmm. gut microbiome yeah. that you're born with. Now, that brings to my mind um, a subset of my patient population that I see that have been born with C-sections. Right. So, yeah. right? so C-sections, you are missing out on your mother's microbiome. Correct, yeah. So that is that, that is something. But that, that was just, you know, as, as a side, I wanted to mention that. Um, herbal remedies. Now, herbal remedies, the body, the cells in your body, they recognize herbs as plants, as food. Now, uh, when they recognize plants and herbs as food, that goes into your cells, not through the chemical channels. It goes into your cells. They are welcome into your cells mm. along the nutritional channels. Right. Every cell has to eat. Every cell, yeah. you know, needs nutrition. Every cell welcomes nutrition. So. Uh, plant-based approaches can often, it's very interesting to me, Hans, because plant-based approaches can often be, in the beginning, a little bit harsher okay. than chemical approaches, just in the beginning, because they are going intracellular, so yeah. they are not only addressing yeah. the extracellular matrix right. with the infections and toxins, they are going straight away, you know, at the same time, intracellular. Now, I've been able to... Uh, <laughs> kind of help with this Herxheimer or die-off reaction when first starting patients on herbal protocols by having in place a foundation protocol uh, in place to make sure that you have binders in place, you have organ supports in place, you have nutritional options and choices, you know, with, with like we mentioned before, the yeah. diet, the air, the water, and the environment. Yeah. That is all clean in place. That helps you deal with Herxheimer or uh, die-off slash detox reactions much better. Interesting. Wow, you really set up there. It's uh, interesting to hear that because when you say plants maybe are more effective or maybe even more aggressive, I was wondering, has that got something to do that, for example, essential oils I'm aware of and water that is in the right structure is taken up by the cell without any effort? It doesn't need to use energy, whereas food or anything else, it needs to open up the pathways to enter and create energy to actually open up the, the doors for the nutrients. I would agree with that. Now, that is, once again, you know, diving deeper. Yeah. So that's exactly the reason why, or one of the reasons why I created, I decided to create my own line of herbals okay. so that, you know, yeah. So we had a completely biodynamic, sustainable farming for yep. the herbs yep. and we had spiritual harvesting and they were small batch uh, small batch extracts made consciously with respect and gratitude for the plants that that were helping us oh, wow. so it, yeah so it requires you know a, a special kind of medicine maker mm. to be able to incorporate all of these ingredients Beautiful. and and you know it, it becomes it becomes um, a completely higher level of herbal experience. And yes, that is where you will see the seamless osmosis yeah. um, of these herbal beneficial compounds, antimicrobial compounds in these herbs that, that kind of seem to seamlessly 
enter the cells yeah. and start helping the body right away. You, you, you sound like you're really building up this resonance of just the oneness that is there. I mean, we are part plant anyway, evolved out of plants a long time ago. So it's this recognition and plants having that vitality, in inherent vitality. It's just like the body recognizes what it needs. I find it always very interesting that sometimes even the same oil, essential oil, with different people has a different benefit because they have so many compounds that are effective, actually, that, yes, we want to address symptoms, but we also want to address the whole person, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. You know, no matter how tasty the herb, yeah. uh, people react differently to it. You know, if, mm. if I have, um, like sometimes when I do Lyme support groups, you, you give the same herb, say, for example, Hawthorne. Yeah. To five different people, and you see, you know, three of them receive it with a smile on their face. <laughs> I mean, after they've ingested, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 you know, maybe three of them, you know, um, have have a frown or or a grimace on their face, like you. Yeah, what is this? And the others are like, oh wow, this is so beautiful. So that is that is such an individual reaction, and, and you know, I believe it it actually filters down much deeper than that. Is the the kind of kind of inner being you are? You know, are you an old soul that uh-huh. has commiserated with plants, mm-hmm. with you know these age old spirits that have far more experience with sorrow and adversity than than we have, mm-hmm. or are you you know um, a young soul you know who is who is here on this planet experiencing life and and you know learning and you. You mentioned gifts, you know, and um, uh, one of my majors for my PhD was quantum physics. And, you know, quantum physics talks about archetypes. Yes. So the archetypes you bring with you and, you know, it's it's very important because most uh, the on my spiritual journey, the one thing that I learned, not just from quantum physics masters, spiritual masters as well, that all of the gifts, the archetypes that you bring with you into this world are not for you, they are for others. They are for serving and helping others. Mm. That's uh, like, I, I just want to reach out to everybody out there who's listening right now. And do you feel that relief, that sigh to give what you come with, that gift that you are for the earth and for humanity, each one of you uniquely. I, I so love what you just said. It's so addressing that uh, that search. I think that for a lot of you out there, you are on this search. And if you only tune in what you've come for, your mission, you know, then all this healing that you're talking about, the, the synergy that's happening then between the different kingdoms of nature, the different archetypes, the different constitutions and all that, it will come into harmony. You will be amazing. So thank you so much for mentioning that and bringing that also into the conversation. Beautiful. And what about your own uh, creation that you um, so wonderfully evolved over the years to support this journey? So they are um, working also with, um, are they homeopathically treated? Not just like you say, they're, they're grown with a great awareness. They're harvested with huge awareness. And with uh, this appreciation and gratitude, so when you then come into producing these uh, remedies that you are making, uh, what are you looking for, and and how are you gonna uh, have people integrate them into their life? Maybe to to finish with that last thought, and then uh, we round off. Yes, sure. Well, right now the remedies are being used only in my practice, and. Uh, the, the process is to have practitioners get certified in the BioNexus approach and then to have the remedies available to those practitioners for their clients. The, the remedies are powerful and complex. The, the way it started out was, uh, what happened was I started, you know, of course, there's always the, the, the cost factor as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I started noticing that the commercially available herbs were, you know, I started noticing I needed to increase 
the dosage yeah. more and more mm-hmm. to get the same uh, the, the same amount of relief or the the, the same results yeah. that I used to get with much smaller amounts. And in the past, mm-hmm. when when you know herbal medicine was new, newer, we we would be able to request you know practitioner small batch yeah. uh, individually shipped to us, and that that somehow stop that 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 was not happening anymore and um so obviously as you increase the dosage the cost goes up as well and i said you know like how exactly how costly are these herbs to make i mean let's let's have a look you know they're not even organic Mm -hmm. we don't know where they are coming from so let's let me personally go in and and just uh, you know uh, explore and i did um, and it, it turns out that it is definitely possible to make lower cost and higher quality. And, you know, just to give you an example, we went down from needing uh, 45 to 60 drops yeah. of each herb to 5 to 15 drops of each herb. It's remarkable. That's a huge difference. It is. It is a big in difference. In effectiveness it and is. cost effectiveness and in health effectiveness. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. That's so great to hear. And that's partly because you're sourcing your herbs from higher quality soils and growers and and also elaborating them in a way that they become more effective through the synergy of different herbs together and the essential oils that you're using? Yes, exactly. Now, uh, we do use frequency medicine, but that mm-hmm. is individualized. And again, you know, mm-hmm. it is... Uh, uh, it is highly customized process, as you know, yeah. for certain people who understand it. I, I don't use it, you know, I, I don't really believe in, in saying that, oh, you know what, all herbs are uh, frequency enhanced. Yeah. You know, it's not like saying oh, all herbs are kosher. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's a whole other ballgame because yeah. frequency enhancement only works for those people who understand and believe in it. And I also find that using individual vibrational frequencies is not is good, but if you if you kind of incorporate um, or make it an an autonoso uh, incorporated or blend it into that patient's remedy, that that takes the remedy to a, a whole other level. So it all depends on how much. Mm-hmm. Uh, awareness your uh, patient has, yep. self-awareness, plant, plant-based plant medicine awareness. Yep. So you, you can really have a lot of fun with, uh, with you know, uh, individualized, customized, apothecary-based uh, compounded herbal extracts. That's something that I do as well. Um, and oh. yeah. what, what else did you ask me? I, I once again, you know, lost track a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> many questions. Yeah, it's uh, basically uh, how you customize these herbs, how you uh, enhance the herbs so they are more effective. And then last but not least, um, maybe just to reiterate, you said it in a way already that you're working with people on an individual basis. And is that possible also for people further away? You, you're able to tune into them. And um, like some practitioners, they uh, practice nowadays um, distance healing through thought and feelings and prayers and so on but but you are able to assess that with people even you were on a on a um, platform like us right now on zoom or wherever and you consult people or do you have to see them personally i do mostly virtual consultations yeah. because you know yeah and it's been a, a, a big relief to many people because sometimes Patients from New Jersey are so sick that, that, that they cannot make, you know, that, that half hour to one hour journey to my office. Yeah. So virtual, yes. Uh, energy medicine, yes to that as well. Yeah. And, you know, those of you who are able to, make, you know, you know, it's, uh, I have to mention this. It's been so amazing and so, uh, so gratifying to have people improve to the extent that they're like, you know, Dr. Deshore, my son has lost his diagnosis of autism and we are going to get a visa and fly down to see you. We have to do that. So that's happened so many times. Or, you know, somebody with Lyme and mold will will feel better. I've had people travel down from Malaysia, from Singapore, Hong Kong.
Vietnam, India, mm. Australia, Israel, um, mm. South Africa. It's yeah. it's been so amazing to meet all these different people, different cultures. But you know what? It really doesn't matter what country or culture you're from. You know, it's it's yeah. still it's still a family. You still have the same emotions. Yeah. And those things never change. I mean, you know, love, emotions, um, pain, suffering, all, all of these are uh, are cross-cultural. They, they just yeah. transcend all barriers. You know, speaking of barriers, I, I read something recently that um, I wasn't aware that, you know, Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton had said that, that humans, as humans, we pay so much attention to building walls and not enough attention to building bridges. Yeah, yeah. It, it needs uh, it needs us badly and all you listener out there who are really into this new paradigm shift that we need to actually create that unison and uh, synergy again. I think we had too many separatistic uh, approaches and I mean, we are under attack because as we have the molds, as we have the, the toxins from the chemical industry, particularly Roundup and such things, it is pointed out that they do uh, separate our own cellular communication system and uh, compromising that. So there's no wonder that, you know, we have all these chronic illnesses because there's no communication happening within, let alone between people, because our own organism doesn't uh, function as a unison anymore. So um, I totally understand. And, and you were doing this amazing work out there with the plants and the whole universe in conspiracy with you <laughs> in a way in a positive way because there's also uh, contagious infectious uh, movements out there of creating this new world and you seem to be part of this amazing groundswell and um, pioneer work that uh, is helping to awaken people to this new pos potential and possibility so i'm really grateful and i'm wondering where can they reach you if they want to reach out to you Yes, it's um, actually, if I may, Hans, uh, you mentioned something about essential oils, and, yeah. and I completely forgot to yeah. uh, to address those. You know, there are certain synergistic essential oils that can be used with herbs. So um, a knowledgeable clinical herbalist will be able to, and, and you know, you don't, you don't have to be an aromatherapist necessarily as long as okay. you are you know, um, a um, educated practitioner, experienced yeah. practitioner. Yeah. So there, there are synergistic herbs that uh, that work well with essential oils. So um, that that becomes magic. And then you mm. add something like uh, camel milk. Yeah. It, it, right. It, the, the, Let's crown the it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> right. It becomes enchanted at that point. Yes. So. Uh, camel milk, yeah, you know, because some of the the, the false diagnoses that you get, uh, or not necessarily false, because those things are happening in the body, but but they are misdiagnoses. Whereas the underlying process could be uh, tick-borne or mold biotoxin is something like Crohn's, colitis, asthma, Parkinson's, lupus, ALS, sarcoidosis, COPD migraines, pans, pandas, cancer, it's just, it's sad yeah. that the list just goes on. Yeah. Um, okay, so now speaking about uh, getting in touch with me, it's very easy. It's uh, www.bionexushealth.com. Great. That's my website. And yeah. once you're on the website, you know, feel free to browse, look at resources, and there you will see uh, options for uh, contacting me. So it can be all done online. If there is any kind of testing needed, you know, we can we can just mail everything to you. Um, if you have a local physician you're working with, there are many many uh, local doctors, MDs, DOs, you know, uh, other kinds of practitioners that collaborate and work with me. Because you know, ultimately, every healthcare practitioner wants their patients to feel better. Bottom line. Wonderful. And 
it, I'm, I'm delighted. I'm feeling honored. I, I feel so uh, elated for everyone out there in the community listening to this and viewing and seeing what alternatives there are for your illuminating and inspiring contribution. I understand that you have this wonderful way of sharing, uh, which we talked about earlier. It's the, the base for all health and, and happiness, really. And uh, you have a certification program that you're working on. So for people who really want to spread the word, join this amazing movement of working with plant-based natural medicines and this um, synergistic and quantum approach that you're having. Uh, when will this be happening and how can they reach out to you for that? It should all be on um, on the Biomexus Health website. Okay. I have a, a book coming out first. I, I have a series okay. of books coming out one after another, but the, the first one is going to be the uh, Biomexus Approach to Biotoxin Illness, a step-by-step -step plant-based protocol. Uh, this book has been endorsed by Dr. Shoemaker, the, mm. the forward is by Dr. McMahon, so it's, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So this is going to serve, you know, it's a huge book. It is, it has, it's a, a lot of in-depth information about my plan-based approach. Um, so this would be the basis for practitioner training, and many practitioners have expressed interest in becoming certified practitioners uh, in the BioNexus approach. So I'm hoping uh, by late spring, I should have the certification yeah. uh, and mentoring program available on the on the website as well, so more and more practitioners can join in. Marvelous. In the meantime, they have the book to dive into your uh, understanding and knowledge and experience of this wonderful subject of healing and becoming whole. And again, honor to have you here. We need to round off now. I think we need to meet again. I'm looking forward to another interview. I mean, we're so many subjects we started touching on, but it would be interesting to dive deeper into them. The, the chamomile, your, your bionexus approach to healing and many others uh, that we addressed. Welcome um, to our future um, broadcast to you already now. Uh, please oh, stay connected. Oh, oh. And uh, invitations will go out soon, I'm sure. Um, we will work very hard in getting this broadcast and this podcast and interview out as soon as possible. Thank you, your listeners out there on the Healing Matrix online. And Dr. Jody A. Dashor, uh, well, Deep hearted, very heartfelt thanks to you. And looking forward to talk to you soon on this platform. Um, be well and enjoy life and a wonderful new year for those who might be listening before or after. There's always new years and new moments in life to embrace change. Love and blessings out there to you all. Bye bye.